in what? In vivo versus in vitro. And then there's ex vivo, in situ, in silico. There's all these different in terms that we use to describe where an experiment is taking place. And they can get kind of confusing, but don't you despair because here's a quick guide to what's what when it comes to what's happening where. So let's start with in vivo, which is like in an organism versus in vitro, which is in some sort of artificial setting, such as a test tube or such as like cell culture. If you're talking about something that's not single cell and grows like bacteria or yeast or something like that, if you're just working with those as normal, that would be in vivo. Um, but when we're talking about cell culture dealing with like cells that you take out of a person and grow them in a dish, this would be an example of in vitro. Although some people distinguish between this, like in, they call it like in cellular or in cell culture to distinguish that from the really, really, really super in vitro stuff that's done like in a test tube with the minimal amount of components. So in biochemistry, we often like to take a really reductionist approach, a minimalistic approach, where we break things down to the smallest number of pieces, the smallest parts, um, and we manipulate them as much as possible to try to figure out what those parts are doing without having all the noise from the surroundings. This is really good for figuring out mechanisms and fine tuning on like what binding constants are and things like this, but it's less realistic than when you have something in, in vivo in an organism. Um, and cell culture is kind of like in between those two. And I have a post more on experimental systems if you want to learn more about that. But we have in vivo, which is Latin, comes from Latin for within the living, and then in vitro, which comes from Latin for within glass. Um, and so like glass, like of your test tubes, um, and they might be doing this in a test tube, you might be doing this in an Eppendorf tube, you might be doing this in dishes and things like this. So there's all sorts of different in vitro, but it's characterized by some sort of like artificial setting that you can manipulate. So that's in vitro versus in vivo. And then we have ex vivo. So ex vivo, as opposed to in vitro within the living, ex vivo is outside of the living. And so basically what ex vivo is, is you take a tissue from a living organism and then you grow it outside of the, or, or you work with it outside of the organism, but you're not really growing it. You're not really like propagating it. You're not trying to make these artificial conditions where it'll grow forever. Instead, you're kind of just working on it in as natural a setting as you can. So maybe you take out like the liver from some organism and then you're doing some experiments on the liver or, or something like this, where you're dealing with some whole organ, some whole tissue, things like this, that you're trying to keep in as natural environment as possible. Now, sometimes you might hear about things like ex vivo, um, like editing of, stem cells or things like, or bloom marrow or something like this that then gets put back in the patient and things like that. So ex vivo can sometimes be used as like a treatment or maybe surgeons take out something and then work on it and put it back in. Those would be examples of ex vivo. With ex vivo, so that's still, um, you're working with it outside of the body, but in this case, it's more like realistic conditions and you're trying not to disturb things. You're not creating these artificial conditions that we have in cell culture where we're really trying to manipulate things and we're really trying to just get things to grow like forever as well and things like that. So that would be an example of ex vivo. And there are also things like organoids where you can take cells and then you basically grow them into these clusters and things like that. That's kind of in between like the cells in the dish and the in vivo. But when the only, when you, once you take something out of an organism, it's no longer in vivo because in vivo means within the living. Um, and when you take it out of the living, then it's not. And so if you take it out of the living and just work with it as is, that's ex vivo. But more commonly, we're taking it out of the living, we're adapting it, we're breaking those tissues up into individual cells that we can grow on dishes and things like this, that would be an example of in cellulo or in cell culture or it's just a type of in vitro and that we can get super duper duper in vitro when we deal with just kind of like reconstituted systems where we take the individual molecules and we mix them together and see what happens. Those were all examples of things where we're actually like working, we're manipulating things, we can actually touch the things that we're working on. But sometimes we can do experiments where the only thing that we're touching is a computer keyboard. So in silico is a term that we use when we're dealing with things in computer land. And so examples of this might be things like molecular docking, where maybe you're trying to take a bunch of different um, drugs and see if they could theoretically bind to a protein by comparing their shapes and seeing if they match up and things like this. So this, you're not even, you're not testing if the molecules actually bind, but you're just seeing, okay, could they theoretically bind? Then you might actually go and you might test if they could bind. And maybe you'll start super duper in vitro. You'll start by just in a test tube, mixing these two components and seeing if they bind.
Then if they bind, maybe you're gonna go and you're taking it into cell culture and you'll see if they still bind inside of those cells. And sometimes they might not, they might not even be able to get into the cells. And even if they do, there might be some inhibitor in the cells. Um, but if things bind in the cells and maybe they have some effect in the cells, you wanna see, okay, well, can they actually get into cells inside of the body? Can they have an effect inside of the body? And so then you might take things in vivo and actually put it into an organism. And so we often use these different levels of experimental systems in order to find some result, And so we're going from in silico often to in vitro to in vivo, where we might find some, take some finding from in vivo and then test it in vitro and things like this. So you can go back and forth between these different levels. Finally, there's in situ. So in situ is basically in its original place. And so when you're doing something in situ, you're basically looking and seeing, okay, like what's happening where, things like this. A common example is fish, um, fluorescence in situ hybridization, um, where basically what you're doing is you're taking some sort of like fluorescent antibody or something like this, and you take cells and you fix those cells, so you freeze them, and then you, or you don't like freeze them, but you chemically freeze things in place, and you kind of put these molecules in there that are going to bind these antibodies against a certain molecule that you're looking for, and you want to see where that molecule is within the cell. What you'll do is you'll put these antibodies that are labeled, um, and you'll attach them, um, you'll send them in and they'll bind to that molecule. And because you're doing it in situ, you're doing it without actually disturbing the cells other than like freezing them, which can, can disturb them and things like this when you're chemically altering them. But the molecules still, still be in there about their original place. And then the antibody will bind to that. You go and you visualize that antibody and you can see where that molecule that you were looking for was located in the side of the cell. And so this is showing you like in situ. There's also a bunch of advancing technology where you can do things like in situ sequencing, um, where basically you can go and you can actually sequence all those messenger RNA transcripts and where they're located within the cell to tell you about what proteins are being made where. So that is great because it can tell you, you don't have to know ahead of time what you want to look for, um, but the technology is still at an early stage um, and, and things like this. And so, but keep a lookout for more on that in the future. So just to review, we have in vivo, which is in an organism, and then we have in vitro. And so in vitro, there's like different levels. So you can have super duper in vitro. We're talking about like in a test tube with these individual components we mix together. This is the kind of stuff I really love. And then we have like in cells. Um, and so this is a little more realistic. We also have like in organoids, which is more realistic than that. But all of those are outside of the living organism and they're in some sort of like artificial controlled setting where we're optimizing things to be able to grow and we can manipulate the conditions to try to have a little control um, so that there's not too many variables confusing us or confusing our experimental results. Then we have ex vivo, which is taking something outside of a living organism, but working with it as close as possible to it being in the living organism. So we're not trying to manipulate conditions as much. And we might be taking an organ out, we might be taking tissue out and working with it as is, um, rather than breaking it up and trying to grow it forever. Then we have in silico, which is where we're just doing things in a computer, and I say just, but as someone who spent the weekend trying to analyze a bunch of data, computer work is really hard. But that's in silico where you're doing things like that. You're doing things like docking molecular dynamics, saying if I made this change to this protein um, amino acid, say, like one of these places in the protein, what is the likely effect going to be on the protein's activity and things like this? You're predicting things um, or you're analyzing things, but none of this is being done with actual new physical experiments that you're doing with wet work. And then we have in situ, um, which is basically where it just means doing things in place, such as binding to antibodies in place in fish so that you can see them, or doing sequencing in place and things like that. So hope that helps you understand um, what's happening where and what we talk about, how we talk about what's happening where.